Normal people become terrified of criminals. Shots were just fired. Police just came out and told us, and we're headed there right now. They become terrified of their own government. I want to pull up this tweet from Stephen Crowder. It is from his discussion with Alex Jones this morning. He says, quote, this was a strategic Democratic Party and PR operation. Alex Jones clears the air on why his Twitter account was banned, how it feels to be reinstated on X by Elon, as well as what his future plans are. So let me, uh, let's play this clip that, so, so we can hear it from uh, Crowder's show. Because of something to do with Sandy Hook. And, um, a lot of people think that you were banned from Twitter because of something to do with Sandy Hook. And Elon clarified that the reason you were banned from Twitter had to do with that sniveling worm Oliver Darcy. Yeah. Nothing to do with Sandy Hook. But the actual reason for sending him was he, he basically insulted a journalist. I they deplatform us. Uh, for a bunch of made up crazy stuff. The last thing was Oliver Darcy. Later, before they ever sued me, they were saying I'm the Sandy Hook guy and I'm attacking the families and sending people to their houses and none of it was true and no one was even going to their houses and people were peeing on graves and none of it was true. None of that was even shown in court. They were allowed to just get up and say it with no evidence because I was already found guilty. Right. And so I started saying, hey, I think it happened. I'd already said that, by the way. I, I did an apology tour on Joe Rogan and Patrick Ben David before I even got sued and said, hey, here I am years ago saying I think it happened. And they said, oh, now you admit you lied and did it for money. This was strategic Democratic Party PR firm operation. Um, a lot of people think that I, uh, I, I think so. I think we know for a fact that right now as we're entering 2024, I mean, so this was back in 2018, entering 2024, we have, I'm not going to name the groups, and you guys can if you want to, they're these uh, Democrat PR, Democrat, uh, 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 nonprofit, 501c4 type organizations, all they do is launch lawsuits in order to win elections. If you think the 2024 election is simply how many people can go and cast their ballot, you're wrong. A whole lot of it is going to be procedural fights. It's going to be court battles. Mm -hmm. And I think a big component of why not just Alex Jones, because it, it, it was a coordinated move that got him banned. Like we, we can see him wiped from every platform instantly. But there were many other people. Paul Joseph Watson got banned from Instagram. And what did he have? He had pictures of him like smoking a cigarette by the sunset, just like ridiculous things. Like, what are you banning him for? It is political. Moving into 2024, I would not be surprised if we see a ton of moves like this. That being said, with Elon Musk owning X, it's going the other direction. We're starting to win this one. Especially with other institutions like Rumble out there. Now, uh, Rumble also has a very interesting lawsuit against uh, some of these. You, you call them democratic organizations. I call them more uh, government intel connected organizations that are also financed with uh, billionaires, individuals' names uh, like George Soros, who, of course, do play a major role in our political discourse. So uh, w when you see the kind of coordinated attacks that happened a couple years ago, it, it wasn't social media. It was uh, government officials. We found that out through the Twitter files. We found that out through all the disclosures. We found out that U.S. government officials, FBI officials, Intel officials were saying, hey, we don't like what these people are saying. Shut down these individual voices. They're talking about this kind of news reporting that we don't like. Shut them down immediately. And they did. Your tax dollars essentially financed a lot of this. And I really hope that these new lawsuits uh, really shed a light. And we have a lot of discovery, specifically when it comes to the larger involvement of outside forces, not just democratic organizations that are playing a major role here. Well, you mentioned Soros, and I think that's actually really a crucial part to all of this, because for so long, the way that they got you to not ask questions or file lawsuits was uh, they kind of associated Soros, insulting Soros, criticizing Soros with you being anti-Semitic or, you know, calling you names, throwing labels at you. And that was actually quite effective for a few years there. I would say between uh, Trump running in 2015 to about 2019, that was pretty effective to throw certain labels at you. Then I think uh, Americans started to wake up by and large, people who weren't even political by nature, they started to realize, okay, these labels don't actually mean anything because my next door neighbor is being called a racist for having a Gadsden flag or something like that. They started to realize these labels didn't mean anything. Then they started actually investigating it, uh, who Soros really is. I think more Americans are aware of these strategies that the left have has used for so long or just the, you know, the uniparty at large to silence us. This idea that you can't question anything. M Americans are aware more than ever before that we've been lied to about not just the government, but about who these people are that we're surrounded by in our communities and you know we look around like you know the people who are who are silenced very early on um and and we're like like milo yiannopoulos for example or gavin mckinnis and it's like these people are not who they told us they were yeah you know i i know the exact moment when the when the tides turned it was when taylor swift called out george soros several years ago 
I'm half kidding, by the way. But Taylor Swift calls out the Soros family because they undercut her. And I do think that that does open the door a little bit for people to criticize this George Soros. A lot of conservatives are attacking Taylor, but I'm like, dude, she put out this big post talking about how her music was stolen from her. It's not political at all. But now, well, now there are going to be a lot of people who are critical of George Soros in a completely apolitical context. You can't call them all anti-Semitic anymore. Right. And I think that's what it took to bring it into the mainstream because Taylor Swift is in the mainstream. I think that's a really, really good point. I actually think it's uh, like it's true. Like, I mean, like I think that in order to make something to be effective, you need to somehow bring it into the mainstream. It can't just be a like political junkie talking point. This is why I think it's a psyop. All these conservatives attacking Taylor Swift, because mm -hmm. all of a sudden these accounts on Twitter are like Taylor's working for George Soros. And I was like, well, she doesn't like the guy. She's posted against him. Take the opportunity, man. Take the win. You got I think this would be a really great video for Freedom Tunes. Where it's like a bunch of 17 year old girls screaming, George Soros ripped off Taylor Swift, and then the media is calling them all anti Semites. It's a shame <laughs> that that guy's not here. But, but uh, <laughs> anyway, I, I wanted to bring up a, a, another point here, what, what we were just talking about, because it was Alex, it was Milo, it was Gavin, it was Robinson. A lot of big prominent individuals were censored, but more importantly, a lot of ca kind of smaller up and coming content creators were also censored and then obliterated and had their entire careers destroyed. They weren't the big guys. They weren't the big players that could sustain these attacks. And I, I, I think truly the biggest damage that happened was on all the people that were coming up that were going to have an impact now that were going to be prominent that were going to be big but had no chance because the algorithm screwed them over destroyed them demonetized them and hurt our kind of discourse more than we could even imagine parlor would be twitter right now exactly mm -hmm. that's I think crazy that it, I, I, it's like the war gaming i mean if we're really concerned with a war with russia we have to look at this as common sense realistic as possible that these centralized services are vulnerabilities like if if elon holds twitter on a central service verizon can shut them down the government can go in there and get his whoever wherever they're hosted can shut them down they need to decentralize this service as quick as possible they need like something like briar or noster or something where we can run it on our phones decentralized because I this, mean, it's it's just inevitable, man. Because he, especially he, with these infrastructure attacks, especially what, what happened to to Rumble, especially what Rumble today, and and, and, and yeah. what will be happening probably to Twitter, as of course Twitter also had a lot of very uh, important infrastructure problems. And I think the next step, if they can't silence the person, if they can't silence the voice, they're going to silence the megaphone that people speak through. And and these are the attacks that we should be keeping an eye out right well, now. So so I wonder, Elon Musk gives the big F you at that New York Times event. These advertisers are, 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 are canceling and he says they're going to be the ones that destroyed this company. I think we, we, we did briefly mention this a couple of weeks ago. Elon Musk could theoretically just say, I am federating X, meaning it will be a decentralized open source infrastructure that connects to all the other, in, other infrastructure. And it will X will never go anywhere then because now you're integrated in this decentralized open source network. He can easily offset tons of the cost through open sourcing and distributed uh, 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 decentralizing servers and services through the what's called the Fediverse. And then there would be a major business loss. The big challenge with this is that he took out loans to buy X. But if X is on the verge of collapse, this may play out poorly for him. But I do think the richest man whose net worth is currently, as of today, estimated $244 billion. I kind of think he can stand to lose $44 billion. I think so. And it's not just that. Hold on. Like, the there's investors involved they would lose a lot of money but let's like let's let, what's the worst case scenario elon says all the advertisers pulled off in a coordinated fashion for seeming political reasons you can't hold me responsible for that x is now done what do we do open source decentralizes our best path to maintain the platform and retain memberships and, and advertising the me the uh the fediverse is great although if they stay centralized on like big data centers or in, in AWS or cloud, wherever they're hosting, that yeah. can still get shut out of the, the Fediverse. So you're looking at- Versus a mesh network. Yeah, mesh networks, yeah, which are network, like yeah. really up and coming and they're challenging still to transmit video because they're, you know, so cell phone to cell phone. But right. yeah, 50 cell phones, 48 of them go down. The other two are still connected with Twitter. And then that's how it'll work. But if the establishment is, is really desperate, right, and, it, and they're about to lose a lot of power and they're about to be held accountable for all the horrible things they did to us, how far do you think they're going to go to stop that from happening? I think we have to examine that in a very critical way because I think they're, they're willing to go very far. I think they're willing to do a lot of crazy things that we can't even imagine right now mm -hmm. to just how far they will go to say, hey, um, 
There's going, there's going to be no accountability here. There's going to be no truth here because as soon as the people find out the truth, it's game over for them. It, it's, it, it, they're, so, it, they're so cornered. They're, they're so in a fragile situation that, that truly this is a very dangerous time for, for all of us. Yeah, I think wherever we're thinking, they're thinking a step ahead. Like I think yeah. that they're aware that that would be our plan B, our plan C. Like I, I think they're fully aware of, of the direction this is headed in. They wouldn't do the things that they're doing or they wouldn't have done the things that they have done to us for years if they didn't, if they weren't able to think one step ahead. I mean, it's the same argument you can make for Donald Trump. Everybody's like, well, you know, we're so back, he's gonna win, whatever. But I mean, it's we're talking about the deep state here. There's just no, th- th- there's nothing that's too far for them. I it disagree seems. completely. I look, like, the Titanic can crash into an iceberg. You know, you you can you can. There's a lot of conspiracies about that. Too. Sure, <laughs> but I'm using it as an analogy. I'm not making it literal. It, you can build the biggest ship. You can design it to to rip through ice and then you come across bedrock and be like, we did not expect that to happen. We calculated and then boom, we tore the hole and now we're sinking. It's possible. Sure, they can see far ahead and they may be thinking abandoned ship. Yeah, there's a lot of bankers mm-hmm. there against the U.S. Federal Reserve, but that's a different story. But yeah, I, I do believe uh, that you, you could be correct in your sentiments, but but just understanding how they work and what they did to the people, especially within the last three years, uh, especially w- within the last 22 years, especially w- what happened in New York City. W- when you calculate all of their moves and decisions, nothing is, is out of the realm of possibility here to how far they will go uh, to stop people from uh, finding out what they're really uh, up to. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.